Welcome back, true believers and spectacular Spidey fans, to another Spider-Man PS4 related video. And today is actually a fun topic recommended to me by Propane Salesman. This is his idea, and without him, this video would not be possible. So thank you so much, Propane Salesman. You are amazing. And I was actually thinking about this topic, but I really didn't know what to discuss about it until I actually did thorough research and kind of see some patterns between Insomniac Games' covers and other Spider-Man games covers, specifically the original Spider-Man games covers, and I thought it'd be fun if we could just discuss about this topic and see what ideas you guys can come up with in the comment section down below, and see if you agree with my ideas while discussing about these certain box arts that I decide to choose for this video. So, of course, what I'm discussing about is what will Spider-Man PS4's box art look like? So, in the past, with Insomniac Games' many titles, there have been tons of different iterations of their games and what the box arts have looked like for those games. And all of them have been spectacular looking. They have shown really cool designs for both, you know, Ratchet and Clank, as well as what they did with Sunset Overdrive, and even Resistance with the gritty tone and Spyro with just the fun, lighthearted tone. Same with Ratchet and Clank. Now, the pattern that I noticed between the recent Insomniac Games box art covers for their games is that they show the main character surrounded by the side characters, supporting characters, and enemies in the game. And they did this with both Sunset Overdrive and Ratchet and & Clank PS4. And I think it'd be really cool if they continued that pattern with Spider-Man PS4, seeing the just vast amount of people, characters, just things that we will be able to discover and explore and interact with in that game, and showcase that through really in-depth box art. So here, with Sunset Overdrive, we have the main player right there, the male player that you can play as and customize. Then you have the Las Katrinas girl, you have Walter, you have the Scabs, you have the OD, you have the robots, you have Fizzy there in the corner, you have the big title, Sunset Overdrive, and you see Sunset City in the background. You see Floyd there in the corner as well in the top right. Now, all this is great because it just shows the short amount of things that are in this, this huge game. You have the crazy antics from the characters to the giant weaponry to the just zany title. And even right there with the kind of cartoon thing that they do, blam, like the cartoon comic book type of uh, sounds that they make that they try and ins insinuate with different things like wham, pow, bam, like old school 1966 Batman style. Um, and again, you showcase the enemies, seeing what type of threat they can be, from weird, crazy robots to, you know, crazy zombies to just normal citizens. And then you have this weird, totally fourth-wall-breaking Deadpool-like mascot in the top left, just showcasing what a crazy game this is. And this box art totally showcases that in a fantastic way. Now moving on to Ratchet & Clank on the PS4, this box art followed the same exact pattern and did it in a much more concise way with the same layout that they did with Sunset Overdrive. You have Ratchet & Clank on the front, of course, and they're kind of in a little easter egg pose because on the first ever Ratchet & Clank game, they were in a pose where you see Ratchet in the front carrying a giant gun and then Clank on the back kind of turning around. This, you just see Ratchet and Clank separately, and they're kind of paying homage to the very first cover of the game in 2002 when it was released, which was awesome. And then you have the main villain, who we thought was the main villain of the game in the top right, Chairman Drek. But it turns out, spoiler alert, it was Dr. Nefarious who was the main villain. And that is why he's not shown here, because it was supposed to be a surprise. And then we have Victor Von Ion right there on the right above Clank showcasing he's kind of like the big henchman or one of the big bad guys that you will fight in this game. Then you have Captain Quark and the two um, rangers, the two galactic rangers that you can fight alongside with, as well as the, those little tiny henchmen that you see in the bottom. Those are the big robot henchmen that you have to fight during the game. And I think between Sunset Overdrive and Ratchet and & Clank's box art, because if you played Ratchet and Clank, you know that Dr. Nefarious is the main antagonist of the game, even though throughout the entire game we were to think it was Chairman Drek. And then they just showcase that through their box art by making it a mystery, by making it still unknown on what's going on. But you have your main heroes on the front, totally showing their amazing heroics, ready to take on the action that is waiting in this game. Then you have the side characters on the left that are going to help you out in the game, as well as the main enemies on the right. Which is why 
I think it fits for both Sunset Overdrive and Ratchet & Clank that these box arts were the case, because with Sunset Overdrive, they just smashed everything into one giant box art cover, showcasing the craziness that will await you in the game. With Ratchet & Clank, it's much more concise, it's much more clear. Those are your heroes in color, and those are just the supporting characters slash villains that you will be fighting alongside with or fighting against in the game. Which is why, compared to the original Spider-Man games, and when I say original Spider-Man games, I mean the Spider-Man games that are not tied into any movie property whatsoever, I picked two, which are my favorite. And of course, this is probably one of your favorite Spider-Man games of all time, True Believers and Spectacular Spy fans. It is my second favorite game of all time, or second favorite Spider-Man game of all time, which is Ultimate Spider-Man. And the reason why, it's short and simple. Not only is it showing you the two characters that you will be able to play in this game, it's showing you the two main characters of this story, as well as showing you who is good and who is bad. Spider-Man is in full-on color, on the front of the cover, ready to take on some action, while Venom is creeping up in the shadows trying to take out Spider-Man. And it is totally reminiscent of what that story in the game represents. A hero trying to save the city, and a villain lurking in the shadows trying to take out the hero as much as possible. And if you have played the game, you will know that the Venom and Spider-Man dynamic in this game is unlike anything else. I think that they should make this game itself into a movie, or at least incorporate the ultimate version of Eddie Brock slash Venom and the ultimate version of Peter Parker slash Spider-Man in a movie in some way. Hopefully, we will get that in the Spider-Man Homecoming franchise, you know, the trilogy of movies that we will get for the MCU Spider-Man. And I just hope we see Venom again in some context or another in a Spider-Man movie, but hopefully they will take the ultimate route with Eddie Brock if we do get Venom next time. And it, it's just simple box art. It's very comic book-like as well because the game itself was trying to pay homage to the comics. And this box art totally looks like a comic book panel, which is fantastic. And they actually took that pose right there from Venom from a Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley Ultimate Spider-Man comic. And they just incorporated it into the cover, which is beautiful. And now my favorite Spider-Man game of all times, box art, which is not only amazing, but also it's just a great game. Spider-Man Web of Shadows. And it portrays the basis of the game perfectly. You have Spider-Man forefront on the cover. You have Venom on the left and Wolverine on the right. And it's just so dynamic. Because of how this game lets you choose between good and bad. And being Red Suit Spider-Man or Black Suit Spider-Man. And that showcases it perfectly right here. You have Wolverine who's a one of your allies if you're a good guy in the game. As well as a character that is in the game that you can fight against. And Venom, of course, the main antagonist of the game. And then you see on Spider-Man's forearms, the main city right there, if you're a hero, and the symbiote apocalyptic version of New York City once Venom starts destroying everything and making everyone infected with the symbiotes. And it showcases the dynamic, again, between good and evil. The choices that you can make in this game will define you and will define the outcome of the game, as well as how Spider-Man will actually help or hinder the people of New York City. Which is why, with Spider-Man PS4's box art, I think we are going to get a hybrid of all four of the covers you have just seen me describe about. Because of how this is a very interesting thing. Insomniac Games is known to make really dynamic games, and they got to showcase that with dynamic box art covers. Even with their old school games like Resistance, Spyro, the earlier Ratchet & Clank games, they still had really cool box arts that really showcased the intensity and the dynamic uh, features that will be present within the game. And for Spider-Man PS4, like I said, I would want a hybrid of the four box arts I showed you today. I would want Spider-Man to kind of be not as huge a focus like these two previous Spider-Man covers, but a little bit smaller, and maybe showcase a really famous cover or artwork or really cool panel of some kind from a famous Spider-Man comic book that would showcase the amazingness of this character and showcase how amazing this game is going to be on a fully next generation Spider-Man game that is exclusive to PlayStation 4 because with the PlayStation 4 exclusives they always have really dynamic box art covers again ju not just with Ratchet and Clank but with Infamous Second Son with Uncharted 4 it's just such a huge vastness of the covers and different art designs that each of these games have but again I would like to see Spider-Man be a little bit smaller on the cover and then showcase the numerous side characters that make Spider-Man who he is, like Mary Jane, Harry Osborn if he's going to be in the game, Aunt May if she's going to be in the game, um, maybe some of the villains, like you can show a little bit of the inner demons with Mr. Negative on the side, maybe Green Goblin if he is confirmed to be in the game, 
and just show New York City glistening in the background with Spider-Man doing either a just standard pose like this or maybe about to swing towards you in a really cool fashion. Um, I think any of these options would be cool or maybe Insomniac will surprise us with something totally different, but knowing them, I cannot expect anything less than amazing from them. So thank you so much for watching, True Believers. Thank you to Propane Salesman for giving me this idea. It's a great idea, dude. Thank you so much. Stay spectacular, Spidey fans. Peace out.